Hey everybody, Mark here at 8-Minute Axe. If you're like me and you love your Spark, but you just don't want to be bothered with the app, you'll definitely want to check out this video. I promise you, it will be a game changer. If you do use the app, but you're still wondering what the heck the knobs do, the physical knobs I mean, I'm going to show you that too. Lastly, for both you app and non-app users, if you just want to get rid of the damn bassiness once and for all, I'm going to show you how to eliminate that as well. We have a lot to cover and I want to get through this quickly, so let's jump right into it. Let's start with you anti-appers. Whether it's because you're technologically challenged or because you just love the convenience of putting the Spark on your desktop and just plugging in and you feel like the app just defeats the purpose, I have news for you. Even if you don't log into the app, you're still kind of using it. The primary function of the physical knobs, these, is to control the app. Each knob is assigned to control a different function. Most of the assignments are obvious, but there are a few quirks. I'm going to connect my Spark to the app now so I can show you exactly what each knob does. Pay attention anti-appers because this is valuable information for you too. All right, so let's connect it. Let's start with the first knob, the amp selector knob. There are 30 plus amplifiers to choose from on the Spark app. However, you only get to choose from seven if you don't use the app. And the seven are as follows. So for acoustic, you get the jumbo. For the bass, you get the RB800. For the clean, you get the blackface duo. For the glassy, you get the two stone. For crunch, you get the JM45. For high gain, you get the American high gain. And lastly, for metal, you get the insane. Now, anti-appers, you can use the other amps that are available in the app. If you turn the app on, select the amp that you want, and assign it a preset. And that's the key to everything for you anti-appers, if you want a wide array of sounds. There is a little bit of work you have to do in the app, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Each amp is laid out as such. You have gain, then you have bass, then you have mid, treble, then the master controls what says volume on the app amp. That's a tongue twister. So we're on the insane right now. Let me just show you. It's the same for all of them. So if I move this up and down, see how the gain is moving on the virtual amp? Okay, same goes for the bass, the middle, and the treble. And you notice that jump there. And that's another thing I'm going to show you. And that's why you get all these crazy changes in volume, because one of the weird nuances here. But before we do that, I do want you to take a look at the app and notice that there are three pedals to the left of the virtual amp. You have the gape, the comp wah, and the drive. Now, unfortunately, none of those are controllable using the physical knobs. If you want to use any of these effects or any of the other choices available, for instance, the comp wah has, we've got one, two, three, four, five choices there. And the drive, there's a lot of choices. We've got 14 different, but none of those are controllable using the amp. So if you like one of them, you'll have to select it in the app and then assign it a preset. The good news is that the three pedals to the right of the virtual amp are fully controllable well, I shouldn't say fully controllable, are kind of controllable using the real knobs. You'll notice here we've got mod, delay, and reverb, and each controls each respective category. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you move any of these knobs all the way to the left, you turn them off. And if you move them up to different levels, each one controls something a little bit different depending on how the pedal's laid out. Let me show you a couple of the quirks real quick. Now, my favorite pedal is this guitar EQ right here. Most of the pedals, if there's a level or a mix knob, that's what each knob controls. However, it gets weird with the guitar EQ. For some reason, the knob controls the 800 hertz. That's right, it doesn't control the level. Now, if you turn it all the way down, it still does disengage or turn the pedal off. But I'd much rather have it control the level so I could set my EQ parameters and leave them as is. I'll go through a couple others real quickly. Let's go with the vintage delay and the vintage delay has a repeat rate, echo, and intensity. You think it would control the intensity, but it doesn't. It controls the echo. You have to go through yourself and discover there's a bunch of weird quirks here. Thankfully, to most of the pedals, the knob are assigned to the level or the mix. If you turn the spark off, disconnect the app, or change to another preset using the app, you'll notice that the bass, middle, and treble don't match the bass, middle, and treble on the physical knobs. So what happens when I move one of these? Well, it jumps. That's right, each knob jumps into place to kind of catch where it was, watch. You see how it kind of caught the bass there? Every time you turn the spark back on, if you want to reset it, you basically have to toggle each switch to the right and to the left. That's how you can get the physical knobs to actually control what you want them to. It's a real pain in the butt. That's why I highly encourage you to use presets, set the levels the way you want them, and don't touch the knobs anymore. That's your best bet. Let's talk about the number one problem now, the bass 
and how do we get rid of it? Now, I did a full length video on this already. I'll leave it up there. If you want detailed information, I encourage you to watch it. In this video, I'm just gonna go through it real quickly. Last July, Positive Grid did a firmware update where they added a couple of new amps and a couple of new pedals. Because the new stuff included a Klon clone and a Dumble OD special clone, this guitar EQ received very little fanfare. If you think the spark is too bassy, this is the key to everything. This pedal will totally EQ out any bass problems you have. So let me just show you. Okay, sounds muddy like it always does. So I kick on my EQ pedal. I can bring the bass down. Look at that, I mean, I'm gonna go dramatic here just so you get the idea. I mean, you can literally get rid of as much bass as you want. get a little bit of bass in there. See, that already sounds too bassy. As soon as I start bringing that 100 up, you're better off leaving that one all the way down. Now it does suck that you can't use any of the other pedals in the chain on that particular category. So if you wanna use tremolo or chorus or vibrato, phaser or flanger, well, you're gonna to have to just live through the bass, or at the very least, turn your treble all the way up and your bass all the way down, and that's about the best you're gonna get. Okay, anti-appers, how do you take advantage of all the features of the Spark without using the app? Well, the truth is you can't take advantage of all the features, but you can lock in four of your favorite sounds if you're willing to take 30 minutes and assign each of the four presets a sound that you tailor make. So the first place I would go is to the Mod EQ channel and make sure that I've got my EQ pedal selected, and I'd make sure whatever sound I was getting that I first got rid of that crappy bass. Then you choose your amplifier, and you have any amplifier to choose from, so let's go with the Dumble. And I wanna get a little drive now, so I'm gonna select the tube drive pedal here and turn the drive up a little bit. And I don't want any delay, so I'm gonna keep that off. And for reverb, I'm gonna choose the Hall Natural. Turn the level down there. So if I like that tone, I'm just gonna hold down one, and that's my tone now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the app, or actually I'm just gonna turn this off. Now when I turn this back on, it's gonna come back to the last setting I had, which was preset number one, Dumble Overdrive Special with the green tube drive. Once you anti-apper set four great presets, there's still one other thing you're gonna to wanna to do each time you turn the amp on. Now what I do after I turn it on is I sweep all the knobs left and right. So now I know that the physical knobs are controlling exactly what I want them to. Now if I wanna fine tune it, I'm not gonna get that drastic jump or that big dropout in sound that drives me nuts. So now you've got an amp that's not one of the original seven presets. You've got a different drive pedal and you still have some control with the physical knobs. Now I don't know about you, but I don't need more than four killer sounds especially when I'm only using this for a practice amp. So I think this is an easy way to overcome having to use the app at all, and you can still exert some control over the sound with the physical knobs. I hope this video cleared up a few things and gave you a little more insight into the Spark amp. Still no looper pedal, still no way to engage more than one pedal in each category at a time, but overall still an amazing deal for less than 300 bucks. If you found the video useful, please hit the like button and leave me a comment. And if you've made it this far and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Most importantly, have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.